Hello, glad you could join us as we go step by step through Mark's Gospel. Today we find Jesus in the temple. There are all kinds of people there. Who does Jesus draw attention to? Which one of them does Jesus say they've got it right? Will it be the one you expect? The passage we're looking at today is Mark chapter 12 and verses 35 to 43. If you're watching on video, there is a link to an online Bible in the description. Just click it and it should take you straight to the right place. I wonder what it would be like to be a football scout, traveling the world, going to exotic locations, watching the greatest footballers. It'd be amazing, right? Well, maybe it's sometimes like that, but I'm sure it isn't always. You see, not all football matches are played in sunny climates or spectacular stadiums. There must be a lot of cold, wet evenings thrown in as well. As the football scout travels around, what are they looking for? They're looking for players who impress them. They're looking for players who stand out. In Mark 12 and verse 35, we're told that Jesus is in the temple courts. He's surrounded by people and he sees what they're doing and what they're like. Some of those people are the teachers of the law, men whose job it was to know what God had said and to teach it to others. But as Jesus looks at them, he is not impressed with them. Why not? Well, first, because they lacked real knowledge of what God had said. In verse 35, Jesus asks this question. Why did the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? Now, if you've been traveling through Mark's gospel with us, you may think that's an odd question. One of Mark's points in this book, and one of the distinct claims that Jesus makes, is that the Messiah, who is Jesus, is the son of David. So why is Jesus raising it as a point of contention? Well, he explains in verses 36 and 37. David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? Here, Jesus is pointing out that the teachers of the law have only a superficial understanding of what God had said. Yes, they knew that the Messiah, God's promised king, would be the son of David, but they hadn't dug any further to understand what that really meant. They knew he would come from the line of David, but hadn't gone deeper to realise that he would also be greater than David. The reason for this seems to be tied to the second problem that Jesus has with the teachers of the law. In verses 38 and 39, he says, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honour at banquets. What is Jesus saying here? He's pointing out that these people like the perks that come with their position, respect, honour, praise, but they're not so keen on putting in the time and effort to really understand what they're supposed to be teaching or to live it out in their lives. We see that in verse 40. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus is clearly not impressed with the religious leaders of his day. He sees past the act and straight into their hearts. He doesn't find people who love God and love others, but those who are in it for themselves. What happens next is extraordinary. Mark tells us in verse 41, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. Jesus has moved and is now sitting where he can see the donations box in the temple. There seems to be a flow of people, each putting in their offering. Some appear to be very wealthy and probably carrying their big bags of coins and then putting all of that money into the offering box. Surely Jesus must be impressed by what he's seeing, yet he remains completely unmoved. Then Mark tells us, a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few pence. I always imagine this lady is an elderly lady, but Mark doesn't mention her age. He just tells us her position. She was a widow, she'd suffered loss and she was poor. She didn't come with a large bag, and her gift wasn't particularly valuable. She had two small coins and she placed them quietly in the box. 
Yet Jesus sees something that others don't. In verses 43 and 44, Mark tells us, Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. This poor widow, with her two tiny coins, is the one who impresses Jesus. Why? Because she gave everything. Because her gift cost her and showed and demonstrated her love for God. Because it wasn't a show. Her faith was authentic and real. To everybody else in the temple that day, she was probably invisible, but to Jesus, she stood out. I think this is important to grasp if we want to understand what Jesus is looking for in people and what it means to follow him. The Bible is not interested in grand gestures and good impressions. Instead, it focuses in on the heart. It asks, do we trust in God? Not do we say we trust in God, but is it real and does it permeate through our life? It asks, do we love God? Not do we sing about love for God, but are we willing to give everything for him and the glory of his name? How authentic are we with Jesus? That's all for this episode. Next time, Jesus predicts that the temple will be destroyed. But is that all he's saying? Do hit subscribe or the like button if you want to be notified when it comes out. Hopefully, see you next time.